18 years. That is the sentence a federal judge handed down to Elmer Stewart Rhodes, founder of the right-wing extremist group The Oath Keepers. Rhodes was convicted of seditious conspiracy related to the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. It is the longest sentence so far handed down to any of the January 6th insurrectionists. In delivering the sentence, Judge Amit Mehta said Rhodes presents an ongoing threat and a peril to this country and to the republic and to the very fabric of this democracy. Yet the judge chose to give Rhodes less than the 25 years that prosecutors were seeking, which was well within the federal guidelines. It wasn't as if Rhodes was showing any remorse in court today. The judge even said so. Appearing in an orange jumpsuit, Rhodes called himself a political prisoner and said the only crime he committed was opposing those who are, quote, destroying our democracy. Also notable during his sentencing, Rhodes took the time to endorse the man who brought him to the Capitol that day, wishing for Donald Trump to win the 2024 presidential election. Perhaps it has something to do with Trump's promise to pardon many of his January 6th foot soldiers. Rhodes is one of 10 defendants from the Oath Keepers and the Proud Boys, convicted of seditious conspiracy. His fellow Oath Keeper, Kelly Meggs, was also sentenced today to 12 years behind bars. I'm joined now by Frank Figluzzi, former assistant director for counterintelligence at the FBI and an MSNBC national security analyst. Great to see you, Frank. I want to play what um, Stuart Rhodes' defense team said after this whole sentencing was over. Here, here they are. Based on Judge Mehta's uh, belief of what the facts show and his recitation of that yesterday and today, um, I believe that was lower than what I thought Mehta would do. It was lower than you thought today. Yeah. I, after today, I thought it would be higher. I anticipated much higher than an 18 year sentence. Not that I agree with the sentence, but I anticipated much more based on the way that he was leading up to it. Correct. Frank, I agree with them. Just reading through what the judge was saying, the way he blasted uh, Elmer Rhodes, were, I was surprised that it was only 18 years. Were you? Joy, I'm with you on this. Look, it's a stiff sentence, but I compare it to other federal crimes. You rob a couple of banks, you're looking at 15 to 20 years in prison. You commit and are convicted of what I believe to be the second most severe charge the federal government can throw at you, seditious conspiracy. The only thing worse would be treason, betraying the country while at war. And you get 18 years. You try to rob the country of its democracy, not money in a bank. You try to rob it of the peaceful transition of power. So, yeah, I'm with you. Um, I think it's stiff, but it's still too light. And nevertheless, there is some good news coming out of this joy in the sense that we're already seeing a chilling effect from this prosecution of Oath Keepers leadership. Folks in law enforcement who signed up years ago for something called Oath Keepers, they didn't know what, what they were signing up for. Many of them now saying, hey, time out. Uh, I didn't sign up for that. I didn't sign up for seditious conspiracy. So there's that. There's also a blow with this sentence to the militia movement. Um, not the hardcore, diehard domestic terror guys who are all in on chaos and anarchy. I'm not talking about that, but I'm talking about the, the folks out there who are going, yeah, maybe not. Maybe I'm not showing up for the violence, you know? Yeah. yeah. So and, and there's I'm something. Guessing there's so, and, and also, if people really believe that Donald Trump gives a damn about any of these people and is going to pardon them, I got a bridge to sell them, uh, the Brooklyn Bridge, and you can have it for a mere, you know, five ninety five. Like, he doesn't care about these people. I'm thinking if you are, and let's just go through, the Oath Keepers and Proud Boys have been convicted of seditious conspiracy. It's now a large group of people. If I'm, let's say, Enrique Tario, who, like Stuart Rhodes, Elmer Rhodes, was not physically at the Capitol, and he sees him get 18 years. This guy's 58 years old. He won't be out till he's in his 70s. Not long enough, but pretty long. I'm thinking they've got to be worried, right, when they get sentenced. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I mean, who else do we know who's very high profile and wasn't inside the Capitol as neither Enrique, Enrique Terrio or Stuart Rhodes were, but helped instigate, incite, coordinate, plan violence that day? Yeah. So that's people <laughs> like Donald Trump, Roger yeah. Stone, Steve Bannon, who all must look at this. But you know who else is looking at this as, a, as kind of a beta test? I think special uh, counsel Jack Smith is looking at this going, Wow. Um, we've had now two major cases, Proud Boys cases, Oath Keepers cases, very serious cases. D.C. juries aren't buying their stories. And he may be emboldened to really, really levy the most serious charges against Trump and his cohorts. Do, do you think that this kind of a sentence, because it is stiff, we don't want to make it sound like we don't think that it is a rough sentence. It's 18 years is a long time. 
Do you think that this might help unlock some of the answers to the questions we haven't got answered? Who put those pipe bombs down? Like, do people start talking? Just in your experience as an FBI uh, official, do, does it loosen up uh, people's uh, remembrance and memories of the truth when they see people going away for this amount of time to maybe turn state's evidence? Oh, yeah. This could be come to Jesus time for a lot of folks who are thinking, I'm not I'm not doing a plea deal. I'm not cooperating. Now they look at 18 years for Rhodes and they go, maybe I will cooperate and start talking. So I think you're going to see some cooperation deals. You'll, you'll start seeing some plea deals for some of these folks and they'll be quietly cooperating. That's that's the hope here anyway. You'll find out who has the highest IQ among these people who are all you know on the loser end of the spectrum when one of them starts talking. That's the smart one. Uh, Frank Figluzzi, thank you very much. And 